really good football team, and and I think there's excitement there. Uh, but our focus has been preparation in terms of that, and so there hasn't been a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of chatter outside of that. Rodney McKenzie, Key talked about you know not wanting to load up a a freshman quarterback with too much. Uh, does that limit what you can? what play calling uh, is going on during the game with, if he happens to be in the game? Well, we'll just, we'll continue to game plan as we see fit in terms predicated on, on the defense that we're playing. And I think in terms of our, our game planning, that doesn't change, right? We go through the process. Um, we expect our quarterbacks to understand what to do and how to do it on each and every play. Uh, obviously we're, we're conscious of, of guys that maybe <clears throat> may have to play that, that don't have a whole lot of experience. We understand that. Um, so I think we're cognizant of the fact that uh, we're moving forward with a full game plan in terms of, of how we would approach uh, this defense. And uh, as we go through the week of practice, uh, as we rep those things, and we'll, we'll get to the point where we feel comfortable with everything on that call sheet, uh, who's ever playing quarterback will be able to um, be able to execute those things we're asking them to do. Next question comes from Corey Clark down in uh, down in Tallahassee. Chris, I just wanted to go back a little bit to your to your time at Florida State, and maybe right before you went back after baseball, was anybody else interested in you? Were you interested in anybody else? What was the recruitment like? I thought I remembered a story where you kind of <laughs> joked with Mark Rick that he told you he didn't really you, maybe you shouldn't come back because the quarterback <laughs> room was too loaded. What was the what was the situation there when you decided to go back to football? Yeah, I'd been thinking about it, and I actually, uh, I actually was not the one having the, those conversations as it relates to me going back to play college football. Uh, my high school coach was doing all the uh, doing all the legwork for me. So when I had uh, when I had spoke to him about the interest of of retiring from baseball and going back to play college football, we reached out to, to obviously people we had relationships with uh, throughout the recruiting process when I was coming out of high school. Um, but fast forward. Uh, I knew that if I had the opportunity to go back there, which Coach Bowden offered me that opportunity, that uh, that's where I wanted to go. Um, I was actually still playing baseball when I went back, uh, drove from Dunedin, Florida, up to Tallahassee to watch Florida State play Clemson. Had an opportunity to sit down with Coach Richt, and uh, he was trying to talk me out of coming back. Uh, he had Drew Henson uh, on an official visit that weekend. They felt like they were going to get a commitment from him that weekend. Um, so they were, they were leaning towards, um, trying to talk me out of coming. Well, I asked coach, uh, coach Rick one question. I said, if I'm the best guy, will I play? He said, we're always going to play the best guy. I said, well, I I'm coming back. And he said, well, let's go see coach Bowden and share the news with coach Bowden. And then, um, ended up, that was probably in about November, uh, October or November, whatever that was, um, in 96 and, uh, Ended up going back down to Dunedin, packing up my baseball stuff, going home and, and uh, entering uh, classes in school in January of 97. Next question from uh, Bob Ferrante, also down in uh, Tallahassee. Hey, Chris, appreciate your time. Um, curious <clears throat> about when you were a player, were you thinking one day I want to be a coach? And then I guess also you've had so many coaching influences from Coach Bowden, Mark Rick, Nick Saban. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. I mean, when you're talking to a player, who's who's kind of voices in your head as you're as you're talking to him? Yeah, one. I think I always knew I wanted to be a coach. I thought I felt like when my playing days are over, uh, I wanted to coach. I wanted to teach, and and um, just didn't know kind of the path that I wanted to take. I took probably the road less traveled. Typically, when you become a coach, especially at this level, you become a GA. And then you become a position coach. Um, when I got done playing, obviously, I had the opportunity to start and launch the IMG Football Academy. So it was a little bit different. I didn't get that GA path where you learn how to do everything that you're supposed to do as a coach. And so I was learning on the fly. But with all that being said, one of the reasons I wanted to be a coach was the influence that Mark Richt had on me, that Coach Bowden had on me. Um, as a player, I had Dan Henning, who was a longtime coach uh, in the National Football League, as well as in college who influenced me in terms of my philosophy and how I teach the quarterback. So a number of people, there wasn't necessarily one guy. And I kind of took all of that information collectively and kind of built my own philosophy. 
And I instilled that as I continue to build the IMG Football Academy. And then having the opportunity to coach in the NFL, coach for uh, 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 Coach Saban, spend a year kind of getting the blueprint for success at that level. So I've just gathered all that information. And I tell a story about I still have my first notebook from my first meeting as a quarterback at Florida State. Um, and I've kept every notebook and, uh, and everything that I've ever done as a player and a coach. And I kind of utilize that and a lot of times go back and reference some of those things that um, to really build my own philosophy. So there's been a number of people um, that have helped kind of shape me into to where I'm today. But I do have my own philosophies on certain things. So it's been a collective effort and a lot of information from a lot of different people. And then I think there's a little comfort when you're coaching the quarterback uh, in terms of knowing that you've played the position, you understand the struggles. Um, and, and I think, um, you know, there's something to be said about that. If you're coaching the quarterback and you've played the position. Okay, we've got time for a few more with coach Wenke. Uh, I'm going to uh, butcher this name. So I apologize. Uh, Oslin, uh, please go ahead. Good attempt, Mike. It's Aslan. I appreciate it though. It's all about being <laughs> self-aware. Uh, Chris, speaking about being self-aware, just, you know, I, I know you're asked about this all the time, but just a clubhouse is so different from a locker room. Uh, you grew up in, in Minnesota. I mean, you're down to even try to chase this dream, and then you you go to Florida State in Tallahassee. How much did you learn about relationships, um, and how much has it served you just going from what you were dealing with playing baseball and being a guy from the Midwest to coming to Tallahassee, Florida, and uh, being around those kind of guys? Well, I think first and foremost, I had to grow up fast. Um, got drafted out of high school, and I went right to the big leagues with the Toronto Blue Jays. That was part of my contract, and so – here I am as an 18 year old kid walking into a major league uh, clubhouse and having to, to grow up very fast and live on my own. And, and I think that helped me in terms of, of my process of being able to go through those things, learn how to deal uh, with different people at different levels, at different ages. Um, and then there's no doubt that, that all of those things uh, helped me in terms of when I came back to play college football, um, I was more mature. I was in a better position to be more dedicated um, more disciplined. And I think, so you look at it and it's always why I encourage kids these day, these days to play multiple sports. I think the, the ability of me to be able to play three sports in high school, because the mindset is different. The physical skill set is different. I played football, hockey, and baseball. Um, and I think because of that, I was more well-rounded. I always encourage kids that, um, that are trying to say, listen, I'm only going to play one sport. I tell them, well, my opportunities and options would have been limited if I would have just played one sport, I had the opportunity now to be able to play two professional sports. So I think um, just the, the, the thing I was thrown in the fire and I had to learn fast. I had to grow up fast. And, um, but I did learn a lot about relationships. That's really what it comes down to. And I think it's, it's paid dividends for me as I, as I become a coach, it is about relationships. We have a, a job and responsibility to coach and teach these kids, but you also have a, to have a relationship with the kids. So they understand because I'm old school, okay, and I challenge them. I set the expectation level high, and um, I don't want them to take anything personal when I'm coaching them hard because I do coach them hard, okay, but because of the relationships I have with my players, there's an understanding that I'm here for one reason, to help them be the best that they can possibly be, and I learned that at a young age. Okay, uh, Ken Segura from here in Atlanta at the AJC. Chris, if I can ask you about uh, playing both Zachs, it was interesting to me that, that Coach Keith said yesterday that he expected both to play. Kind of what went into that decision to, to not just stick with one with Zach Gibson? And, and do you kind of have an idea already of, you know, when we're in this part of the field or this quarter, we, we know we want to get uh, Zach Chiron in? Well, we don't know who's going to play, to be honest with you. Um, you know, Jeff was out there in full pads today out of practice, and, and obviously he's locked in. So, We'll monitor that as we go. He's day to day. Um, obviously, Zach Gibson and Zach Pyron both uh, took a lot of reps today at practice. Um, I think their skill set's a little bit different, which allows us to be able to do some different things. Um, they're both going to be expected to be able to operate and execute our game plan, uh, but we'll be probably specific, more specific with each of those guys in terms of what we're going to try to accomplish as it relates to their comfort level, as it relates to their ability to execute. Um, but I think the good thing there is, is, you know, we've got three guys that, that may see the football field on Saturday. So, um, that leaves a little bit up in the air for them to try to, to try to defend. So I think, uh, we're comfortable with 
after Tuesdays and Wednesdays practice that uh, we are where we are in our terms of our game plan. We'll continue to move forward, practice again tomorrow, and feel comfortable going into Saturday, kind of what we'll do with each one of those guys. Okay. Is there, uh, is there anything else uh, from uh, the contingent uh, that wanted to ask anything about Coach Winky's return to Florida State? Okay. If not, Coach Winky, really appreciate the time. And everybody, thank you for joining us on the call today. Thanks, guys. We'll see you uh, Saturday. Thanks, Mike.